In this video, we're going to take a look at creating a pseudo HDR image using Nick Collections HDR Effects Pro 2. Right, we're going to make a start by coming over to the Layers panel. I'm going to convert our background layer into a smart object. And we're going to do that by right clicking anywhere over this area here. And when you right click, you get a fly out menu. We're going to go down to convert to smart object. Now that this is a smart object, let's go up to filter. We're going to go down to Nick Collection and there it is, HDR Effect Pro 2. And so just moving it up into position, waiting for it to load. It takes a few seconds, so I might speed up the video at this point. Now once it's arrived, over here on the left hand side, you can see we've got the preset library. Now this is showing all of which there are 28, but they're also broken down into various categories, such as architecture, artistic, realistic, landscape, surreal. You've also got your favorites and recently used, which can be quite handy. Now all of these can make quite good start positions, but I like to use the default, which is showing here. So let's fold this out of the way. There it is, giving us a bigger working area. And if we look at the picture at the moment, it is looking a little bit uh, lackluster, a little bit flat, isn't it? So we're going to come over to the panels over here on the right hand side. We're going to come down to finishing and we're going to go down to levels and curves. Now with levels and curves, you've also got a drop down menu. This is showing on neutral from the fly out menu here. You've got these various options, neutral. You've got the exposure value minus one exposure value uh, zero and plus one. That looks pretty good like that. So let's click on this. And if we come down just a little bit further, you can see the curves are showing here. You can also adjust it by clicking on some of the little stops and just moving those about. If you want to brighten it up a little bit further, you can. So it's worth playing with this until you get the type of effect that you want. Right, I quite like the way this is looking. So for the moment, let's scroll up to tone compression. Now with tone compression, I always start off on the HDR method. Now this is showing depth, normal, worth experimenting, see what else it does. We've got subtle. On the other extreme, we've got strong. I think it's going to be between normal and subtle. Quite like subtle, like what it's doing in the sky. Right, detail, got realistic. We've also got accentuated. We've also got detailed, which is just a bit too detailed. So let's go back to realistic drama. We got neutral. If we come up to deep, uh, not so sure I like that. So we're going to go back to neutral. Now you've also got the method strength. The default is 50% worth experimenting, just taking it up and seeing how that looks, taking it down in the other direction. Quite like it round about that area there. Right, we're going to leave it on that. We've now got 27%. I'm going to leave the tone compression where it is, and we're going to click where it says tone compression, just to fold it up out of the way. Coming down to tonality, now with tonality, as soon as you bring your cursor over the sliders, up pops a little uh, percentage. Let's have a look at the shadows. I'm going to move this to the right to increase them. And I'm looking in the areas down and around here. Yeah, quite like uh, what that is doing. Just going to back it up very, very slightly into this area here. That will do nicely. Highlights, uh, moving the highlights across, brightens up the sky just a little bit too much. Taking it down into the minus, and we're going to go for minus 24. That looks pretty good like that. Looking at the blacks, if we move the blacks across, and uh, yeah, making it just a little bit grayer, move it to the left into the minus just gives those blacks a little bit more bite. So just taking it very, very slightly into the minus eight. We have the whites moving this across, brightens up the sky again. Just going to move it very, very slightly into the minus numbers. And there it looks pretty good. What you can also do is just double click on the slider, reset it. If you reset it, he says, go on, thank you. Going back to zero, leave your cursor where it is so you can pop back and forth between the two. Let's take it a little bit more. And uh, no, I'm going to leave it on the zero right after all that. So let's come down to structure, moving the structure across just to give the image a little bit more bite into this position here, 20%. Right, we're going to fold this up out of the way. Color, I'm not going to touch anything here. I'm going to leave all of this as it is. Right, my favorite, selective adjustment. Now with the selective adjustment, we've got the control points. So let's pick up a control point, gonna bring it out over the image, and I want to 
adjust this part of the picture to start off with. So I'm going to put in my first control point here, come into the top slider. Now with the top slider, you can see that circle. Now this is where we're working, but we can fine tune it. If you click on this little icon, puts a tick in the box, you can now see it turns to nighttime and we can move this around where you've got the lighter areas. This is where we're working. That's exactly where I want to be. Just going to reduce it down a little bit more into this area. I don't want it to come over the building on the left hand side or on the right. So that looks pretty good like that. And I also want to bring it down to the whole building. So we're going to do that by clicking on the icon here, which is the duplicate control point. So there it is. There's a second control point. Let's bring that down into this area again, just waiting for it to brighten up so we can see exactly where it's going to be working. Just seeing if we can take it down a little bit further into this area here, there, that should be brilliant. Right, bringing my cursor back up and ticking all those boxes. We've now got our sliders showing here. If you press shift on the keyboard, so press shift on the keyboard, now click on the top slider, so they now all come out. We can now come to the exposure, just make it a little bit brighter. You'll notice the slider on the bottom control point coming out as well. Let's go to saturation. Let's make it just a little bit more saturated. Let's come to structure, giving it a bit more structure as well. That looks pretty good like that. A little downward facing arrow reveals the black, the whites, the uh, yeah, temperature. You've also got the tint, the method strength. We're going to take the method strength up a little bit like that. Looking pretty good. Bringing your cursor to the side, clicking down, removes those uh, control point flyouts. Right, bringing our cursor over here. If we just click down, you can see there's the before, there's the after like the way this is working. Okay, some more control points. Let's click on it. Let's bring it out into the sky, into just about this area here. And if we come down, there's our exposure. There's all the other bits and pieces, but we've got quite a large area of sky. And if we just have a look at the uh, circle there, it only goes so far. Well, you can take it right the way up, but I only wanted to adjust the sky. However, what we can do, we've seen one way of duplicating the control points. There is another way. If you press and hold down Alt on the keyboard, that's Alt or Option on the keyboard, bring your cursor over the control point. You can see a little plus symbol. We can now click, we can drag it out. We can place it in this position here, still holding down Alt or Option. We can take it into that area. Now that we've done that, let's go back. We're going to press shift this time. So pressing shift to reveal our control points. There it is with the sliders. And if I could just come down to structure, let's take the structure up just to give a little bit more definition to the clouds. Something like this would be pretty good. Let's go to exposure. Let's just take it up very, very slightly. Let's come down to whites. And with the whites, let's take that up to make the clouds a little bit brighter. Method strength, moving that across. See how that's going to work. Uh, there's a little bit too much noise there. So let's take the method strength down into the minus. And I think that might help just to remove that uh, noise. Just taking the structure up just a little bit more. Great stuff. And you can see the way all those sliders are working together. Right, click anywhere off and it uh, just hides those sliders. One more control point. This time we're going to put it over this area here. So I'm going to click down. And with this, let's just take a look at the exposure, bringing it down very slightly, coming down to structure. Yeah, taking the structure up, want to give it a gritty feel. That uh, looks pretty good. And so let's just click in, the, or should I say, put a tick in the box so we can see exactly where we're working. Like the way that is there, that looks pretty good. Looking at the image, one thing I'm not particularly keen on, this building here is a little bit too orange, tends to grab your attention once you've seen it. So let's put a control point in here. Let's just have a look at this circle. Make sure we're narrowing it down so we're just working on this area. Once again, let's put it in a little tick. Yes, that's exactly where we want it to be. It's just on the orange building. So we're going to untick this. We're going to come down to saturation and I'm just going to Move the saturation into the minus area there and just take it down a little bit further. There, blending it in with the image. I don't want to make it look artificial, so taking it into that position. Great stuff, that'll do nicely. Just switching them on and off so we can see that's before the control points, and there it is using the control points. 
right let's fold this up out of the way let's come back to finishing uh, where we started off we're back on finishing we've got at the top here vignettes which is switched off but if you just bring your cursor down you can see you've got lens one lens two you've got all these lenses then you've got the black frame black frame to the white frame I actually quite like that I think it works quite well with the image I might even come back to it but uh, for now we're going to leave it switched off any adjustments to the vignettes can be made by clicking on this icon you've got the amount you've got circle rectangle so you can change the shape of it as well as the size as well so that's all pretty useful my favorite graduated neutral density really like the way this works we got the upper tonality zero stop let's click on the slider let's move it to the left that's going to darken it down and you can see the effect that's having on the sky let's take it to this sort of area here just backing it up very slightly let's take a little bit more got uh, point 0.11 there for the stops the lower tonality moving this to the right let's brighten it up into this area here we've got just perhaps a bit more 25 that looks pretty good now the blend is the blend between the upper and the lower tonality and if we just move this back and forth between the two you can see the way that drops it down this takes it right up I'm just going to bring it into this area here if you want to see the way it's really working just move that across so it's really darkening down and if you just move it there it is down to the bottom moving it taking it up to the top into that position here that could work well so let's just back this up moving our slider back into position great stuff right like the way that's working i'm not going to touch the vertical shift or the rotation so leaving this exactly as it is we're going to now uh, oh there's a few other things let's just take a look nearly forgot we got at the top here we've got the before and the after and you can use this to slide it over the image to see exactly how it's looking you've also got the before and after one on top of the other you can also have it side by side and if i just come back to this some other useful features we've got here we've got the preset library but you've also down the bottom you've also got your history and if you just click on this you can see everything we've done to the image working right the way through here right something else you can do if i just come to custom is if you've created an effect you like you can save it by clicking on the little plus symbol here give it a name clicking on OK and that will save it over underneath the custom tab right now that we've done all this we're going to click on OK this is going to take it back into Photoshop again may take a few seconds or so probably speed up the video at uh, this point and there it is it has arrived taking a look just switching off our smart object going back and forth like that now don't forget the whole thing with a smart object is we can go back into HDR Effect Pro 2 if you want to make any adjustments by just clicking here. You've also got a mask and you can also just fade it down slightly by using this little icon here. Right, so one thing I always do just to check it out is an adjustment layer of levels. So with levels, taking a look there, a little bit of a tail in the highlights, pressing and holding down the Alt or the Option key, clicking on the slider moving it across it's the whites that's what you want to avoid that's where it's going to be blown in the highlights so backing it up into this position here just moving it in just doing it by eye into that area right let's come and have a look at the uh, the darker tones the shadow areas it's the blacks you want to avoid that's where it's going to be clipped in the black so moving it up again just releasing alter option doing it by eye here the center slider here if we move it to the right you darken it down you introduce more of the darker pixels move it to the left you brighten it up just going to take it very slightly over into that area let's just have a look there it is perhaps just backing it up a little bit more there looks pretty good and there it is there's our pseudo hdr image using command zero control zero to go to fit on screen go on give it a try i hope you've enjoyed the video please like and subscribe but until the next time, it is happy imaging and take care.